Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 241 and today is our lesson number 131 the problem is very straightforward we are supposed to be given we are asked to plot two functions that's all plot the following two functions Let's call the first one j of x, which is the square root of x for as long as for as long as x is positive or equal to zero. And I should have not I should have not been so liberal with the space here. J of x equals x of, uh, equals root of x for as long as x is greater than or equal to 0 and k of x which we are told equals x squared again for as long as x is greater than or equal to 0 so we are going to plot these values of uh, these functions so j, function j and function k only for the positive values of x that's all we are not going to bother with negative values now listen if you are still having trouble with this whole business of the whole notion of functions what does it mean for something to be a function why are some called f of x and sometimes they call them g of x and sometimes they call j of x and k of x or monkey of x and hippo of x if you're still having trouble with this this this, this concept uh, this concept i would like you to go back and watch if you have not done so already watch the 106 and 107 and if you have already watched them rewatch them if you're still having trouble with the notion of function because I'm not going to obviously explain it in every single video that will be tedious so j of x right here here is our x and here is our y let's plot, let's plot some values here when x is 0 square root of 0 is 0 when x is 1 quarter square what's the square root of <coughs> what is the square root of 1 quarter what does square root of something mean a square root means, for example, square root of 9, what does it mean? It means we are looking for a number such that when that number is multiplied by itself, it gives us 9. Square root of 9 means, square root of 9 is asking, what is that number which, when multiplied by itself, gives us 9? And of course, there are two answers. The answers are positive 3 and a negative 3. Positive 3 and negative 3. If you have positive 3 multiplied by itself, it's going to give us 9. Negative 3 multiplied by itself is going to give us 9. The exact same question is here. Square root of 1 quarter means, what is that number which, when multiplied by itself, gives us 1 quarter? And the answer to that question, answer to that question is 1 half. 1 half times 1 half, 1 half times 1 half is 1 quarter. And again, negative 1 half times 1 half is also 1 quarter. But uh, we are not interested in negative values because x has to be more than or equal to 0. So the answer here is just 1 quarter, or 1 half. The square root of 1 quarter is 1 half. The square root of 1 quarter is 1 half. Then the question is, what's the square root of, what's the square root of 1 half then? What is that number? What is that number which, when multiplied by itself, what is that number which, when multiplied by itself, gives us half. Now, we did, in this case, we will not have a precise value, but we'll have a very close approximation, which is, listen, we know, we already know, of course, what, what is 7 times 7? How much is 7 times 7? 7 times 7 is 49, obviously. Therefore, 0 0.0 times 7, therefore, if 7 times 7 is 49, then 0 0.0 times 7, 0 0.0 
0.7 times 0.7 must equal 0.49. 0.49 of course is very close to half. So again, what is that number? What is that number which when multiplied by itself what is that number which when multiplied by itself is going to give us 0.49 and the answer of course is that number is 0 0.7 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 gives us 0.49 so square root of 1 square root of 0.49 is exactly 0 0.7 which is what we're going to put here approximately 0 0.7 because 0.49 is same as 0.5 let's carry on then and finally when x is 1 Square root of 1 is just 1. Let's plot these values, shall we? Let's plot these values. Where should we put them? Let's put them here. Let's put them here. As a matter of fact, not, not much. Is, we're only going to be staying in this quadrant because x are positive in both cases. So all the action is going to take place in this quadrant. So I'm not going to spare, uh, waste uh, all the blackboard space for these three quadrants that we're not going to use. So let's make it a bigger graph with just one quadrant. There is your x-axis, there is your y-axis, and let's do it here. So now we can have a nice big open space one and two. And here we're gonna have one, two, three, and four. Five. Oh I shouldn't have done that. Okay, here we go. When x is 0, y is 0, that's right here. When x is 1 quarter, y is half. When x is 1 quarter, this is half. When x is 1 quarter, y is half. So right, that's right here. Let's call this point O for origin. Let's call this point A. This is our point A. Point B, when x is half, when x is half, the y is 0 0.7, x is half is right here, and y is 0 0.7. This is 3 quarters of 0.7, it's just under it. Let's call it point B. And then finally point C is, when x is 1, y is 1. Let's do one more, point D. When x is 2, what is square root of 2? Let's talk about it for a second. What is the square root of 2? Exact same logic will apply. You have to know your squares, as I have said many times in the previous videos, you must know your squares by heart 1 through 20. 1 through 20. 17, 18, and 19 is an exception, but you should know the rest. So what's the square of 14? The square of 14, for those of you who know it right away, would know that it is 196. And if you don't know it, just do it out. You'll see that it is 196. Keep, keep listening. If square root of one, if, if square root of 14, if, the, if if 14 times 14 is 196, if if 14 times 14 is 196, then it stands to reason that 1.4 times 1.4 must be 1.96. You just move to two decimal places, one and two. 1.96 which of course is approximately which is of course is approximately 2 that tells us if somebody were to ask you what is the square root of 0 0.196 square root, in other words they're asking you in other words they're asking you what is that number which when multiplied by itself gives us 1.96 what is that number which when multiplied by itself gives us 1.96 and the answer is 1.4. This question is no different. This this question is no different than asking, what is that number which, when multiplied by itself, gives us 196? But that number is 14. 14 multiplied by itself gives us 196. Therefore, 1.4 multiplied by itself gives us 1.96. That tells us this is 1.4. That tells us the square root of 2 is approximately 1.4 square root of 2 is approximately 1.4 because 2 is very close to 1.96 so let's just put it here when x is 2 the square root of 2 is going to be 1.4 let's plot it here when x is 2 the guy is going to be 1.4 so here's our 1 here's our 1.5 here's our 2 
1.4 is going to be somewhere here and x is 2 right here somewhere let's call it point D so this is our point B, point C and point D we're going to join them now, see what they look like we're going to join them the graph should look something like this It doesn't look very pretty, does it? Oh. Let me put it in a different color. It will look better. Oh, it looks smoother now. Now plus the other one. Enough of this, let's plot the other one. So, now we're going to plot this one. k of x, which is y equals x squared, which means if, it, if, the, if y equals x squared, which means when x is 0, y is 0, when x is 0, y is 0 squared is 0. When x is 1, oh, when x is 1, when x is 1, y is equal to 1. When x is 2, y is going to be 4. Let's do it here, 0, 0. When x is 1, x is 1, y is 1. So right here. And when x is 2, y is... When x is 2, y is 4. Oh, 4 is going to be way up there. 4 is going to be way up there somewhere. Let's put it up here somewhere. Let's pretend this is... x is 2, y is 4. It's going to be even higher. So these are the three points. This one, this one, and this one. Oh, sorry, this one. It's going to look very similar to what you see in the book there, right here. Okay, so this is this point right here, and this one, one is it? And x is one, y is one. That's right. Technically, it goes much higher. That's why it's looking like this. It goes much higher. There you go. This is what you see in the book there. And obviously, a similar shape of this red red graph exists on the bottom part, similar shape of this blue graph exists on the negative side, and we're just ignoring all of that because we're not interested in that. I just wanted you to see where this shape comes from. That's what it looks like. That's what it is. Now if you were to draw a free hand, if you're going to draw a free hand, I don't want to raise this thing because I want to use that for the next next question. Or perhaps we don't. So that's it, we're done. That was it. If you want to draw free end, the free end is very simple, very straightforward. Free end means exactly what it says. You just do it free end with, with, without any scale. One looks like this, the other one looks like that. And they intersect somewhere obviously here. And that point of intersection is 1, 1. It's 1, 1 because 1 is the square root of x, the other one is the square root of x. Square root of 1 is 1 and so is the square of 1. 1 squared is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So that's their point of intersection right there. And of course 0, 0. Again, for the same reason, square root of 0 is 0, and square of 0 is also 0. So that's it. They intersect at point 0, 0, and 1, 1. At the point of origin, and at 1, 1. That's what, that's what it was. I will see you tomorrow, where we'll do the following graphs. That you see on page number two hundred and forty-two. All right, bye now.